Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I am actually not on the East Coast today, but uh, on a little vacay um, out in Las Vegas. But hey, no vacation from Horse Center, my friend. No. Well, Las Vegas, have a great time out there, Matt. I should have said my co-host from the West Coast. Hey, this is week two of our new no producer experiment, folks. So hopefully this will be even smoother than week one. We'll see. Matt, we have a pretty big uh, weekend of racing coming up here. Very interesting kind of weekend of racing. Latruska, the champion older mayor, uh, uh, mayor from last year, returns on Saturday at Gulfstream Park in the Royal Delta. That's Good to see uh, the, uh, the the Mexican queen herself. But we're going to focus on a couple of pretty big races. They're they're both million dollar races. In fact, one mat is a twenty million dollar race. So we're going to talk Saudi Cup a little later in the show. That's the twenty million dollar race. But first, we're going to talk about a Kentucky Derby key prep. It's been a key prep in recent years. Uh, the million dollar Rebel Stakes mat, a mile on sixteenth at Oaklawn Park. The grade two has attracted a pretty big field of 11. And Matt Shipman, I think we need to start the conversation, no surprise, with Bob Baffert and his undefeated cult, New Grange. Yeah, I think we got a field of 11. You mentioned the million dollar purse. I don't know if it's a million dollar field, Brian, quite, uh, quite frankly, the quality of it. And yes, New Grange, Bob Baffert, Baffert going for his I think eighth victory in the Rebel Stakes, and interestingly enough, in the in the prior seven, the only Kentucky Derby winner of Baffert's that was a Rebel winner was, of course, the Triple Crown champion American Pharaoh. But we've got uh, New Grange uh, three for three, a maiden winner, and then a winner of what was two Kentucky Derby prep races. Of course, he did not get any points for the beleaguered Bob Batford when he won the Sham and when he won the Southwest States. Right. Uh, it beleaguered Bob Batford. Of course, we heard the news that Medina Spirit, uh, the uh, uh, since past Medina Spirit, has been officially disqualified from his win in the Kentucky Derby. Bob Batford suspended for 90 days. Uh, he's still not getting, obviously, any Kentucky Derby points, as Matt alluded to. So New Range is the horse to beat in here, uh, but he can't uh, collect any of those points, 50 points to the winner in this 85-point qualifying race for the Kentucky Derby. So there will be less points needed to get into the Kentucky Derby this year just because of the Bob Baffert situation. Getting, uh, getting back to Newgrange, Matt, I, I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, this horse has been very good in his career to date. He came out with one two-year-old race last year. It was at Del Mar. He's, he's run at three different tracks. He's won pretty convincingly in all three. Uh, not a lot of people are talking about him. I don't know if it's strictly the fact that he is a uh, Baffert horse not collecting points, but I think that's only part of it. Newgrange has not been maybe spectacular like some Bafferts have been over the years in his three wins, but uh, he looked good in the maiden. He looked good in winning the sham at Santa Anita. And then he looked good when he came to Oakland Park. So he has a win over the track, Matt. That came in the Rebel Stakes. And uh, we're going to take a look at that now. I'm going to mute this uh, stretch call, Matt, because it didn't sound very good last week. So you can go ahead and talk a little bit more about LaGrange as we play this video from the rebel stakes let's see here yeah brian you know uh, maybe the the thing with uh new grange is uh the fact that yes his, he has won very solidly but maybe one of the things is that his uh his races were just not that fast they haven't produced speed figures that are typical at this point of horses that are going to go on and have success in the Derby, there he is winning the Southwest Stakes by you know, a little bit more than a length. That's right, Matt. And um, there's there's the toggle issue again. Hey, we got rid of it. Uh, you saw him rallying nicely, actually. He stopped that pace in the Southwest. No, it wasn't overly fast, but if you look at other times from Oakland Park that week and that day, uh, I thought it fit in pretty well. And he beat a pretty good field. He'll see some of the same horses in here 
Barber Road was the horse kind of rallying on the middle of the track, but he wasn't really uh, running fast after the great uh, new Grange. He was kind of uh, going by the rest, uh, which included, of course, Ben Diesel, who was uh, uh, right there for a long time before New Grange and Barber Road kind of uh, separated themselves from the field in the Southwest. Uh, one of the horses they separated themselves was Dash Attack, who was, uh, I believe, the second choice in that Southwest map coming off a win in the Smarty Jones. So I guess one of the things I'm saying is that New Grange has done absolutely nothing wrong. He's won all three races convincingly. He's done so at different tracks. He's won over the track. I mean, he seems like the horse to beat in here. On the morning line, they actually had Barber Road as the second choice on the track morning line. But uh, if you look at our odds that we created here for Horse Center, we think chasing time is going to be the second choice, Matt. He's one of those my racehorse stable horses. And you know those horses get bet. This horse has gotten bet every single time. And last time was the first time he stretched out to two turns, Matt. And uh, Chasing Time looked awfully good doing it. Yeah, and right. He did. He has gotten bet heavily in all of his races. And, uh, you know, Steve Asmussen, who is the trainer, um, you know, he is not always hell-bent on having his horses uh, win first time out. Sometimes they do, especially up at Saratoga. Uh, uh, but... Uh, Maybe this is one of the ones that needed a little bit more time um, and uh, broke his maiden uh, in his third try at Churchill Downs. And and I did really, uh, you know, like that allowance victory at Oaklawn Park on the track. Uh, and, and he did that impressively. And it's going to be hard to say. I think it's going to be pretty wide open and, uh, and fairly even between a few horses for, you know, second, third, and fourth uh, uh, favorites in the race. But, you know, a New Grange, I think, is going to be a, a, a very clear favorite. Yeah, I, I, New Grange should be the clear favorite. I, I disagree with you a little bit because I, I think that uh, the horse that they, they are going to clearly make the second choice is chasing time. We'll see. Uh, that allowance race was very impressive. I'm going to pull that up next, Matt, to take a look because uh, – you know, he was getting better in his sprint races. I don't think any of his races were, were were poor at all, but I think he was getting better as it went in each uh, of those sprints. He ran against some good horses, and he's been first or second in his last four races, but you can really see him uh, uh, take off uh, down the stretch of that one-mile allowance race at uh, Oaklawn Park. Let's take a look at that one now, Matt. Let's see if I pull this up correctly this time. Come on. There we go. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, so he's by the time they straightened out that he was yeah. uh, he was taking off and, and the stretch is pretty much all chasing time. This is that young sire again. We we did an awful lot of talking of he's running off the screen there, but we did an awful lot of talking about uh uh gunrunner last year as a great first crop sire, but uh not this time has been uh, absolutely terrific as well as a young sire. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and uh, getting to see that replay, and folks, you you, you have to be uh, impressed with his turn of foot going down the stretch there and drawing off. Yeah, and he's he's already as as you said, you know, it took him three races to win his maiden, but he's already got a little bit of uh, experience under his belt. He's got five races. He's got to win over the track, like the favorite. Uh, and he's uh, now looking like a horse who wants to run a distance. I think that only helps as we're looking at him uh, maturing and getting better, a little bit better with age here. So I think Chasing Time is an interesting horse in here. I just worry about the value, and part of that is the My Race Horse Stable partnership, all his owners. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons he gets bet so heavily every race, Matt. We already talked a little bit about Barber Road, uh, a nice horse, a nice son of uh, race day who second and third starts. Uh, he was very impressive, uh, winning and a maiden and allowance. And then he's running three straight stakes where he's run second each time. Barber Road, we saw rallying behind New Grange in the Southwest, but he's actually run second three straight times. I think the Southwest was his best yet. Another horse with a little bit of experience. Uh, he he's the one that I would look to be the third choice in here. Uh, Barber Road is a horse who looks like he's becoming more of a uh, late runner as he gets more experienced as well. 
Yes, yeah, second, as you mentioned, in the Southwest, second in the Smarty Jones, second in a uh, overnight stake at Churchill Downs. Uh, you know, not fine in the winter circle, and and this field, uh, you know, is not going to be any uh, any easier than those race, races mentioned before. But a very nice horse. Yeah, yeah, one to, to one to watch out for, especially if you're playing the exo uh, exotics. And Barbara Road looks like a logical horse here in this 11 horse field. I also, th I think we've identified the three favorites in New Grange chasing time and Barber Road, but I think there are a bunch of interesting long shots. Uh, we could start with Dash Attack. I, I don't know if you'd call him a long shot for sure because he won a stakes race already at Oaklawn Park, but I think the last race is disappointing and I think he's going to get off at some pretty good odds, the son of Mummies. Yeah, a little bit of a head scratcher horse for me. Uh, won his first two races, Maiden Special Weight, and then the Smarty Jones. Both of those races were uh, on wet tracks for Kenny McPeak, and then he came back on a fast track in the uh, for the first time in the Southwest Stakes, and was I guess a disappointing fifth in there. So not sure what to think about that. Was it the step up in Clan? Uh, uh, class a little bit tougher race in the Southwest. Was it the fact that it was a fast track and, and not a track with moisture in it? Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see about Dash Attack, but I think I like others better. Yeah, I like others better too. Uh, he broke his maiden first time at Oaklawn. He's the most experienced horse at Oaklawn because all three of his races have come at Oaklawn. His first race was on a good uh, labeled the good main track at Oakland Park where he broke his maiden first time out. Then it was the sloppy uh, Smarty Jones where he looked good rallying by the field in the stretch. But then he finally got a fast track and it wasn't so good. And I, I'm, I'm going to say more than just, uh, I guess, a disappointment. It was a disappointment because he was a non-threatening horse the whole entire way. And a bunch of the horses in this race beat him in the Southwest. But he could bounce back. Maybe that was just a off day for Dash Attack. Um, another horse that I think we could look at is Ethereal Road, Matt. I think Ethereal Road might be a horse I'm a little higher on than you are. Ethereal Road comes from the legendary barn, the legendary trainer, D. Wayne Lucas. His barn isn't so legendary, but he is D. Wayne Lucas. Ethereal Road is a horse who took four races to break his maiden, but he was getting better each and every time, Matt Schiffman. It's on a quality road. Last time was a very big performance in breaking his maiden on the same day as the southwest where he came from way back and just blew the field away in the stretch one going away looked like a stakes horse to me but it was only against maidens yeah and it was a nice performance brian drew off to win by four lengths for the hall of famer for the coach d wayne lucas who was in his mid 80s at this point and and you know not missing a beat so it's great to have it in in the field, of course, uh, he'll be going for his third win uh, in the Rebel, the most recent one coming. I think it was in 2013 with Will Take Charge, who is the sire of one of the horses in this field. Yeah, Will Take Charge was an awfully nice uh, horse for D. Wayne. Uh, yeah, nine nine years ago, I think that's I think that's about right, Matt. Another long shot we could talk about, uh, I guess, is the New York bread. You always like New York breads, Matt. That's Unojo, uh, trained by uh, Anthony Dutro, and coming off his best race yet, I think, uh, when he was uh, second last time in the Withers at Aqueduct. Yes, and we saw a New York bread uh, named Shipsational run really well, run second uh, in the Holy Bull. Uh, uh, last month so you, you can't just dismiss these new york breads because of that and and um Un ojo uh ran really well in a new york stallion series stakes race uh, and then stepped up in the withers in uh, uh going nine furlongs um i can't dismiss him i i i think he's a little bit of a live long shot particularly yeah with you can you should get some good odds in there yeah. on that one, Matt. Um, the Withers, you know, he never certainly was threatening the winner, but uh, he he did roll down the stretch pretty well to be a clear second. Uh, the only horse really gaining on the easy winner last time. So Unojo, an interesting long shot for Matt. And I, I want to throw in Stellar Top, Matt, 
because a Stellar Top is a bit of an interesting long shot for me. Stellar Top was a very well-bred, very impressive winner of his debut at Saratoga last year. And he uh, he was thrown to the wolves pretty quickly. He faded out of a couple of graded stakes yeah. in Kentucky after that. And he returned after a layoff last time. He ran third in the allowance race, but uh, the winner was Pioneer of Medina, who ran a very good race next time out in the Risen Star. Uh, Stellar Top was only beaten by two lengths in that allowance race at Fairgrounds. So I think uh, Stellar Top is a horse who could pop up and show improvement second time off the layoff. Perhaps another interesting long shot in this Rebel field. Yeah, I agree. I think Pioneer of Medina was another one of many uh, promising Pletcher uh, three-year-olds. Absolutely. All right, Matt, uh, I think we've been through the horses we like. We've been through the main candidates. I'm going to ask you to pick uh, your top pick or or your top exacta here, one or the other. Give me either one in this year's Million Dollar Rebel Saturday at uh, Oak Lawn Park. Yeah, even though New Grange seems, you know, like the most likely winner uh, in this field, uh, and I feel like there were a number of horses as I was handicapping where the question came into my mind is, why why are they going to do any better now in this field after they've already, you know, run not very well in derby trail races and stakes races? Um, so uh, I am going to try and take a shot against New Grange because there's so much turmoil going on in the Baffert barn, but mainly because, you know, the, the, the speed figures in his races have not been overly impressive. I'm going to take a shot with uh, chasing time because of what we said, we, we saw in that video replay, he, he looked strong down the stretch. Yeah. Chasing time certainly is one I will use, Matt. I'm going to spread out a little bit here. I do think New Grange, New Grange is certainly the horse to beat. So New Grange, uh, will be one of the horses I use uh, needing to run first and second. Chasing Time and Barber Road, certainly. And and Stellar Top will be another one that I throw in with my exactus. But the other horse I'm really going to use the most with Newgrange, the favorite, I'm hoping for 10 to 1 or so on the Lucas horse. I just really like the way that Atherall Road finished off that race. You know, he ran a second, about a second slower uh, in that didn't win, which isn't a lot, a mile 16th, a second slower than the graded stakes that same day, the Southwest when New Grange won pretty impressively, but uh, he he was coming off a much slower pace when he came from way back in that maiden race. So he actually finished quite a bit faster the last quarter mile of his maiden win than they did in that Southwest stakes. So I'll be using New Grange and Ethereal Road the most here in the... Uh, What's the name of the race, Matt? The Rebel. See, I'm trying to look up at all my... There, I'm, I'm putting up a new screen for us, Matt. We, it's time to shift to the Saudi Cup. That's what that screen tells us. We're going to go right into the Saudi Cup, sir. And $20 million. It's the richest race in the world. We have the defending champion. And, and with $20 million, Matt, it should come as no surprise that if Mishrif the really good European-based uh, son of uh, Make Believe, trained by John Gosden. If he wins this race, he will become the richest horse of all time. Yeah, I heard that, Brian. Well, you know, uh, with 14 win, 14 starts and seven wins, two seconds and two-thirds already in his career, he has piled up $15.2 million in earnings. Of course, you know, two-thirds of that coming from – his uh, Saudi Cup victory last year, uh, um, and he's coming into the Saudi Cup this year, kind of the, the same pattern that he uh, that he had last year, um, with this being his first start of this of the year of the race since October of the prior year. And I want to say that you know the the draw. For the Saudi Cup is probably is going on as we're recording the show. So we're going to give you some highlights of, of the most significant horses that we see in the field. And that's why we're starting with uh, Mishrif. Yeah, absolutely. Mishrif is the class of the race. I'm going to say two things that are slightly opposing each other, but Mishrif is the class of the race. 
On the other hand, nine furlongs on the dirt. I still like the Americans best. I know that Mischief ran right by Nick's go and then Charlton on his way to a win there last year. I know Mischief has uh, has run well at this track, even besides winning last year's Saudi Cup. And obviously he's a horse who can run on both turf and dirt. So Mischief is the horse to beat in here. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty long layoff, but as Matt says, he's done it before, and last uh, last year's race was an impressive win. But nine furlongs on the dirt, I still believe the Americans, especially at, at, at nine furlongs. Maybe maybe going longer, it gets a little bit easier for the top internationals to beat us. But at nine furlongs on the dirt, I still like the Americans' bet. But, but having said that, Miss Riff is the one to beat, Matt. I'm going to put up the... Uh, uh, Saudi Cup from last year because it was an impressive performance from Mishrif. Yeah, especially Brian, when you mentioned, as you did, the quality American horses that Mishrif uh, de defeated in Nick's Go, in Charlatan, in particular, coming down the stretch. But uh, uh, there goes Mishrif on, on the way to a very big payday. Yeah, and it, it was a good performance. Um, Nick's go, I guess we've seen uh, when he doesn't control the lead, he's not quite the same horse. And Charlton, I, you know, I guess, I guess we're not really sh never found out for sure how good Charlton was going to be uh, at two turns. We know he was very, very good, but was he going to be a champion type of horse before we retired? We don't know. So. I'm not sure that this is easier. I'm not sure that th this is tougher than last year. It remains to be seen. I know we do have a stronger, a, a, a deeper cast of Americans this year, Matt, because I think I think there's four potential winners uh, from the Americans coming in. And we can probably start talking about the, the horse to beat of the Americans. And, and I think that's the horse pictured here in our graphic. That's Mandaloon, who we just found out now is the official Kentucky Derby winner, finally the official Kentucky Derby winner from 2021. Uh, but coming off a layup, he looked awfully good last time, beating his old rival Midnight Bourbon in the uh, Louisiana Stakes at Fairgrounds. I think he's been training really well for Brad Cox. I think he's only going to be, be better as a four-year-old. There's a lot to like about this son of Into Mischief. Oh, there sure is. And and, and he looked terrific uh, uh, going down the stretch, beating a very, very good horse in Midnight Bourbon, who we'll detail a little bit more uh, in a moment. But now with the Kentucky Derby victory uh, in his record, uh, we're talking about a horse that's run nine times in Mandolin with seven wins and one third. Now he's won four races in a row from the Kentucky Derby to the Pegasus, no, no, not that one, the other one, the one at Monmouth Park, um, which was a prep race for the Haskell, which he was uh, in which he got the victory by disqualification, and then starting out the year with the with a first in that grade three Louisiana stakes. Heck of a record, uh, Brian Zipsy for Mandaloon, and and he looked, I don't know. He looked big and he looked strong and he looked like a horse that had matured a great deal to me as a four-year-old. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, Matt, except for that four wins in a row. I, I look at his PPs and I just don't see four wins in a row. I see two wins and then two second place finishes. Of course, yes, he was put up in the other two. That's What a weird <laughs> record that is to be put up in both the Kentucky Derby and the Haskell. But on the other hand, Matt Schiffman, uh, Mandaloon ran very, very, very good races. Those probably are his best two races of his career when he was uh, a really good second in the Kentucky Derby at a mile and a quarter, uh, coming off his only disappointing race of his career. And, and the horses that were lapped on him as he was second was Medina Spirit in first, Hot Rod Charlie, and Essential Quality near behind. So that Kentucky Derby was a huge performance. And then when he was so game, uh, in a Haskell against Hot Rod Charlie to uh, to go out to the wire, those two ding donging it in a in a strange Haskell with Midnight Bourbon getting uh, squeezed and, and and losing his rider there as he as he stumbled uh, pretty badly in the stretch. So it's a, it's a very strange record for Mandaloon, but a very good record. You're right. Uh, 
I just think nine furlongs is probably in a sweet spot. I think Brad Cox has him coming to the race in the right way. So I actually think Mandaloon is the horse to beat here in the Saudi Cup. And of the Americans, he's I, I like the other three, but I think Mandaloon is clearly the one I like the best. Maybe Art Collector is the next most interesting on the race. Matt, he won the nine furlong Woodward last year quite impressively, beat a horse I love in Maxfield. Art Collector just hasn't quite done it on the biggest stages yet, and he hasn't been seen since his Breeders' Cup Classic, which wasn't great. Yeah, uh, uh, 16 wins in his, 16 starts in his career, eight wins. You mentioned that, Woodward. He also won the Charlestown Classic. Uh, but yes, I agree with what you said, that that is my overall reaction with Art Collector, particularly when you're going into a race, uh, the quality of the Saudi Cup. Um, I haven't seen him win one of those kind of races, although if he can come up with the kind of performance in the Woodward that it took to beat a very, very good horse like Maxfield, um, he could run well. Yeah. In the Woodward, uh, he did get the lead to himself. He's got quite a bit of speed, and uh, he's actually finished first in, in more than the eight races that you mentioned as he was uh, disqualified in one. But uh, Art Collector is a nice horse who probably will break through in a big race. Maybe the Woodward was it, but maybe he's got an even bigger race uh, in, in his uh in his career yet to come. And it, it could be over here. I think nine furlongs is also in his sweet spot, but there's other speed in here. And I namely midnight bourbon, Matt, I'm going to bring that video up now of Mandaloon and midnight bourbon. As we talk a little bit more about midnight bourbon, because it was a good performance for both the winner Mandaloon, but also the second place finisher midnight bourbon, who's running against Mandaloon yet again, as they go over to the Saudi cup. Yeah, and, and in that race, yet again, Midnight Bourbon uh, showing up and competing. And, you know, we've talked about Midnight Bourbon before, and we've talked about, mentioned the fact that his last win came more than a year ago now in the LeCompte Stakes at Fairgrounds on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, um, he shows up, he runs well, only two trips to the winner's circle, however. Yeah, it's 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 almost uh, it's almost unfortunate to say that he hasn't won in over a year because he's run so many good races in so many big races. I mean, he's no horse has run in more big races in the last year than Midnight Bourbon. Uh, but yeah, he has become a, a bit of a bridesmaid, and and Mandaloon has looked better than Midnight Bourbon in their last several meetings. So it, it, it's a question mark whether Midnight Bourbon can. Uh, uh, win a race like this but uh as close as he's come in several big ones you gotta give him a shot i also think that if either art collector or midnight bourbon don't show the speed that we're accustomed to i think it becomes very dangerous that the other one could lead this race all the way around the saudi cup field map because they're both good enough to go wire to wire if unpressured early in this nine in this nine furlong, our graphic I see has, says 10 furlong. It's 1,800 meters, which is approximately nine furlongs, folks. So uh, either one could be dangerous if left alone on the lead. Yeah, I you can't argue with that. It's going to be interesting to see how this race plays out. And with any of these with any of these races over in the Middle East, you know, uh, we'll see how the Americans fare when they're shipping over to uh, Saudi. Yeah, yeah, you never know for sure. It looks like uh, everyone's come in smoothly. Uh, I guess they arrived together, the four. The one we haven't talked about is Country Grammar. I, I don't know what to think uh, necessarily about Country Grammar. He won the Peter Pan as a three-year-old. He won the Gold Cup uh, at Santa Anita uh, as a four-year-old. But on the other hand, he hasn't run since the Gold Cup, which was last May. Yeah, yes, Brian, absolutely. Won the Gold Cup. Won the Peter Pan. Uh, I guess I guess that points out that he he's a good traveler, and that's going to be a, a plus for Country Grammar. But wow, yeah, that is a long, long layoff to be ready to uh, to be a contender in a race like this. 
Yeah, I think so too. But if he comes back, if Baffert has him, he's back in the Baffert barn, by the way, now. If Baffert yes. has him ready, he's another dangerous horse. All four Americans are. There's several other international horses to worry about in here, Matt. Uh, I think we need to talk about the Japanese pair because March Lorraine, I, I didn't think she was going to win the Breeders' Cup distaff, and she pulled it off. She won. It was tight, but she won that Breeders' Cup distaff. But maybe even more dangerous is Tio Kane's who uh, won the Champions Cup uh, over there in Japan on the dirt really nicely. Uh, I guess that was in December. So he might be the, the biggest threat after uh, Mishra of, uh, of the international horses. Uh, Real World's got class seal away, beat Mishriff in, in the last time they both raced, which was that Champions Cup at Ascot. So seal away was a classy three-year-old getting good late in his uh, uh, three-year-old year. We'll see what he can do on the dirt. Uh, any of the other internationals that you want to uh, mention real quick, Matt? Yeah, I think you I think you hit on the major contenders. And certainly last year's Breeders' Cup pointed out that the uh, Japanese horses are not horses that you should just dismiss some, you know, uh, uh, without serious consideration, um, as maybe has been the case in the past. But the Breeders' Cup certainly uh, uh, changed my mind about that. Yeah, well, I still like them on turf, and, and we both like the winner loves only you of the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare turf but I, I don't think there were many people frankly that thought march lorraine was going to win the distaff this is her swan song her final race and they're going out in even tougher com competition than the breeders cup distaff was and that was a uh, that was a tough one all right matt uh another one magni cores i think is a is an international horse who we know can handle the dirt as well so i wouldn't be surprised if he ran a good race either it's a nice feel for the saudi cup I think folks already know who I'm going with, but they really want to know who you like best in the Saudi Cup. Now. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the Americans on the dirt, and and uh, I am also going to go with Mandaloon. All right, folks, it's uh, it's unanimous. The Horse Center crew both is picking the American Mandaloon to win the $20 million Saudi Cup, and we hope all of the horses have a safe race, but we also hope all four Americans do well and come back and run well when they uh, acclimate back to American racing in the next few months. That was a pretty big show, Matt, with the, uh, we're talking about two very interesting million dollar races, the Rebel and the Saudi Cup. We gave our top picks. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, I think we did pretty good with the show uh, here, uh, Brian, and I hope the Horse Center fans enjoyed it. I, I think there's going to be plenty to talk about on the, Kentucky Derby Trail as we move ho as we move forward now that uh, uh, there's been some rulings uh, involving Bob Baffert. We'll see what is going to happen uh, with his horses on the Kentucky Derby Trail. So anyway, my point is thank you folks for watching the show. Yeah, thank you as always for watching. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so now. Turn those Notifications on, never miss another episode of Horse Center. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor. Folks, as Matt alluded to, we will be back next week with another big show. We'll be talking Kentucky Derby rankings. We'll be talking Kentucky Derby preps. There's a gaggle of preps next week, folks. We'll see you then right here on Horse Center. Pirates punches drop back in Spa City as these leaders 